second of our practice problem is looking at the decay of cobalt 60 and we have 3.75 milligrams we want to see how many alpha particles would have been emitted over a time period of 600 seconds okay so let's start with a reaction not called for for this problem but I think it's good practice so we have cobalt 60 so 60 27 CO says it's alpha decay so we're gonna have our alpha particle of 4,2-HE, and then our daughter nuclei, or our product of this, so if it's an alpha decay, so we have 60, subtract the four particles that went here, give us 56. We have 27, subtract our two particles that went here, give us 25, and this is Mn, or manganese. Okay, so we want to solve for how many particles, and we're given, um, a specific time. So if you kind of think back to chapter 14, anytime they've given us time and they want to know how much is left or how much is gone, that's going to be our integrated form of the rate law. So we are going to be using the form where we have ln of uh, the number of particles at time t over our initial number of particles equals negative k uh, times T. Okay, so we're going to be using this integrated form of this rate law. So in our problem, they have given us the initial amount. We have 3.75 milligrams, which is fine. Uh, we can turn this into a um, number of atoms, or we could just keep it in terms of grams. If we keep it in grams, we're just going to solve for this in grams. Okay, so we can do it now or later. Okay, so uh, this here, um, so we have this. We are solving for this. We have this, so we just need to find K. So we have uh, our K equals natural log of 2 over T 1 half. So we're going to use that. So we have our natural log of 2 over our half-life in the problem that it gave us of 5.26 years equals 0.13175 year minus one. Okay, so at this point, uh, we have our rate constant in reciprocal years, but we are given the problem of 600 seconds. Okay, so doing a quick conversion, 600 seconds is equal to uh, 1.90 times 10 to the minus five years. Okay, so now we have years and years minus one, uh, where we've converted that. Uh, you could have converted this into reciprocal seconds, and then you would have had seconds and seconds. That, that also would have been fine. Okay, so now let's put it all together. We have a natural log of n at time t over our 3.75 milligrams. That equals negative k, or negative 0.13175 years minus 1 times our t 1.90 times 10 to the minus 5 years. Okay, so putting all of our things in here, this cancels with this. This will be unitless, but when we solve for nt, it will have the same units as this, or it will have the units of milligrams. Okay, so solving for nt, we get nt is equal to 3.74999 uh, milligrams. Okay, so that ha that is how much is remaining after 600 seconds have passed, which kind of makes sense. Our half life is um, five years, and we're only letting you know 600 seconds pass, so very much of it shouldn't have gone. Okay, so I want to know how much. So this is how much is left. Okay, uh, if we're being asked how many alpha particles, so if we we want to know this we need to know how many cobalt atoms have actually decayed. So if we know what's left and we know what we had initially, the difference between those two has to be the mass of cobalt that decayed. So we're going to do that. So our 3.75 milligrams subtract the 3.74999 milligrams. And when we solve for that, we have 9.40 times 10 to the minus 6 milligrams have decayed. Okay, so our difference in mass 
is what has decayed for our cobalt. Okay, so now that we have that, it's just a little bit of stoichiometry. We're going to turn the mass of cobalt decayed into just number of helium atoms, just using some basic stoichiometry. So we'll start that over here. 9.40 times 10 to the minus 6 milligrams of cobalt. Okay, and then just again a nice stoichiometry. Uh, 1 gram per 1,000 milligrams Okay, so um, one mole of cobalt 60 is approximately equal to uh, 60 grams of cobalt 60. So again, um, when you're not given the mass of the particular isotope, it's okay to assume the mass number is the mass. You're only going to be a few tenths off. Um, a lot of times it'll be given to you in a problem, but again, if it's not, we don't use the periodic table mass. That's the mass of all the isotopes. We just want the approximate mass of this one isotope here. Okay, so now we have moles, moles of cobalt. We're going to go back up to our reaction up here. For every one mole of cobalt, we produce one mole of helium or one mole of alpha particles. So one mole of 4,2-HE for every one mole of cobalt that decays. And then finally to know the actual number of particles, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per every one mole. Okay, so this will give us the number of particles. Okay, so we put this into our calculator, this divided by this divided by this and times this we get um, 9.43 times 10 to the 13 of helium particles. So that's how many helium particles have decayed. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could, oh, hello, bug. Oh, that's nice. Okay, thank you. We're doing chemistry now. Okay, so... You could have if you wanted to. I did all my converting of mass um, down here. If you wanted to, before you use this one up here, you could have taken this uh, 3.75 milligrams and you could have taken that and done this here to convert it into actual atoms of cobalt 60 and put that in here. Um, if you would have done that when you solve for NT, then you would already have the number of atoms that are remaining. So instead of getting this in terms of milligrams, this would have been your atoms of radioactive cobalt, and this would be your atoms of radioactive cobalt that are remaining after the time. Either way would have been fine. Um, mass difference here, converting it to atoms, or again, you can convert it first before you put it in here. Either way would work out.